Hi folks, this is Sean McCormick and we're going to talk about some of the new features that are in Lightroom 6.6 or to be precise Lightroom 2015.6 and um, the first thing I'm going to talk about and it's changed for both subscription and for perpetual users is that lens corrections now been sw switched into lens corrections and to transform and straight away we'll see we have this new guided upright uh, this is a brand new feature that is subscription only and what this allows you to do is if you click on it you can draw as it says here draw two or more guides to customize perspective correction so in here we can pick a point now as we can see as we use it we have a loop the loop is very very zoomed in and i find that it's a little bit finicky to use so sometimes i have to reset the start point so we just get it roughly in place so for this to work you need at least two lines so i'm going to draw a vertical line and a horizontal line so that's just, as you can see it's been very finicky just to get in here it tends to be much easier just to get the second line that's in the wrong place now so I'm actually going to move it I want it to exactly line up with the wall and I'm using I'm actually using a pen rather than a mouse so I actually don't know if it's better with a mouse you can hear me concentrating here okay so that will start to do a correction now if I start to introduce another one here it'll give it a little bit more precision in the upright as well so again I'm going to have to come in and reset that just because I'm not happy with where the first one was oh yeah it's a little bit out there I feel that it's a little it jumps a little bit too much so it could do it being slower so now that is gone and it's corrected my verticals and my horizontals in this image so you can see that it's much quicker if you want to have a little bit more precision so you're actually able to get a more accurate uh, view of your verticals it's perfect for when you're shooting houses and stuff like that where you just want to get things exactly lined up so rather than have Lightroom guess where it is you know exactly where it is one feature that's also part of this is that with the move of lens corrections uh, into transform uh, distortion has remained inside of lens corrections but the other manual uh, features have uh, moved to transform like vertical, horizontal, etc. There's two new things here as, as well, which are the X and Y offset, which is allowing you to move around the image. But as well as having it available here, uh, you can hold down the Command or Alt, Command and Option or Control Alt. That brings a hand. And if we look at the X and Y offset sliders, we'll see they move around. So you're able to move the image around relative. Again, a double click on a slider will reset it, same as everything else. Um, just by way of mentioning as well there is down here you have an option to show a grid as you're doing it as well so you can have the grid is always on or the grid is on auto which means that if you move off the image the stuff goes away so the tool overlays can be always on so you're always seeing these lines um, you can set it to never so you never see the lines just you, you can draw them or you have an auto and what auto does is it just means that when you're hovering over the image you can actually see them on the image but as soon as you move away from the image the lines hide so it just allows you to see what's going on in the image without the overlay on it and um, the loop option is here obviously so uh, you can turn on and off that loop but you kind of do need it to be able to set things properly it's, it's, it's handier for that and um, so again you can go for a wide grid or a tight grid depending on what you want to see as well so that can help uh, you make the decision on where you want things to do when you're drawing as well too so that is a look at the new guided upright the second thing we're going to look at is a change to how HDR merging works normally if your files are offline you can't access them so here we have five images here okay and as we can see by hovering over here we have got five images with sm five smart previews so I've selected the first image now and select it only, click in, in the outside. If I go Command or Control R, it'll bring it up where it is in the folder. So I'm going to select that one and the next four images. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag them to the desktop. So what's going to happen is Lightroom is going to lose them. So they're going to go missing. So now we see the symbol to say there's smart previews there. So if I select these images and right click on them, um, so we don't have the option to photo merge there. We should have the option to photo merge there because we have the smart previews. So I'm going to go back to where the original folders are for a second. Go to folder and library where the images are still selected. And now we have it there. Okay, so it's not available from a collection. That's interesting. 
So now we have the option, some originals are missing. Do you want to proceed with merging the smart preview? So you click proceed. Yeah, with help if I selected the right one there, wouldn't it, folks? Photo merge HDR, because it is a HDR. So again, we get the proceed. So it's going to go create it. It's going to build a preview. As you can see, it's much faster than you would get it if you were building with the original files. So. So it'll give us the order home preview. And if we click merge, it now asks us where we want to save it. Okay. So it isn't uh, saving automatically and stacking with the original like the other ones are. So it also has an additional thing, and that is that it will come up and it will have a different name. There we go, that's the file appearing there now. So, that's the file, and if I press I for information, um, I'm going to press it twice, and have it come up, so we can see it has the name, but it has Smart Preview, that HDR added to the name, and we can see that the file size is 2554, which is 6 pixels uh, shorter than a normal HDR, so it's done a little bit of cropping as well. So that is a look at the new uh, Smart Preview. Now, if you reconnect to the original files, it's not going to generate a new HDR. Uh, this is just a smaller version. If you want the HDR from the full-size files, you will need to make it with the full-size files. So if we go up to Preferences, we can go to Lightroom Mobile. And now we have this new pending sync activity section. All right, this lets us know how many processes are going up and how many processes are going down. So you can also check if there's errors and stuff like that. So if there's any information, basically this information is going to be inside here. In terms of the map, the sublocation is no longer retrieved um, when doing uh, reverse geoencoding. This is a change uh, from Google. Um, if you already have a, a sublocation, the sublocation won't change, that'll still be there. Uh, so, in terms, if we go back to develop here for a second as well, just jump out of there. If it'll allow me to jump out, that is, of course. Um, if you jump out and you're in develop, loading is a little bit faster now. Now, this one is a few on, so it's not done it, but it, it's pre-fetching stuff before and after so that way the loading is quicker so that way when it loads it's trying to load the next few and the previous few so that way you can you know basically get stuff open up faster and get working faster inside develop and um, export has it been made faster there's new tether sdks so that way uh, it should it should look exactly the same but it should be faster for most users on mac the print apis have been updated and um, it shouldn't make any difference uh if, if you have any print problems, though, please, please do let Adobe know. For those who are Photoshop Elements user, you can now import a catalog that's on a network attached storage device without issues. And obviously, as per usual, there's new cameras and new lenses and things like that. A change with GPU is that there's a certain amount of older cards have now been blacklisted from using the GPU. So even if you could use the GPU in 6.5, you might not be able to use it in 6.6. Uh, just a heads up on that. Uh, a little thing as well is that customers in Turkey can now use Google Maps inside Lightroom. Um, Google used to ban use of it inside Turkey, but now it's allowing it again. Another thing that's now there is that if you go to the keywording section and you hover over your keywords, you can see the keyword count. So let's add another keyword here, for example. Uh, dining room. Dining room. Add that in, we hover over again, and it now will tell us, oh, no, click here, hovering over. So there's now three keywords, so you've got a keyword count in that panel as well. So that is a look at some of the changes that are there 
in Lightroom 6.6. .6. The big one is obviously Guided Upright, which is great for interior and architectural photographers. Um, I do a lot of interior stuff, so I'm absolutely delighted with it. Um, I do wish it was a little bit more precise with the loop, um, but it, it matches how it is in Camera Raw as well. So that's Guided Upright, and a look at the new stuff in Lightroom 6.6, 2015.6.